Hi everyone, it's Brian Lutchmeyer, Chair of NADP. Um, I wanted to record uh, just a short piece really to introduce um, some work that we have done over many years um, f with our European partners, something called the Link Network. Now this might be a term that you've you've heard or you've had some dealings with. Um, one of our, our main partners, for example, is AHEAD based in Ireland. They do a very popular conference that we wholly support and work in partnership with actually across um, their conferences and also ours. However, the link network is much wider than a relationship between the UK and Ireland. It also uh, encompasses other countries in the European Union and wider. And I wanted to just kind of have a uh, briefly explore that with you as a membership so that you have an understanding of some of the work that, that I've been doing as chair of NADP and also the vice chairs of NADP, but also the, the, the broad range of work as a board of directors and uh, through our office um, as well, because the relationships that we have built and will be continuing to build over the long term are significant and I think it's right to share this with you as our membership so that you have an understanding of some of the wider activity that we engage with. Before I move forward, I'm going to show a variety of slides. There are only a few in all fairness. I'm going to take my face off so you'll just have my audio and uh, there should be captioning um, associated with the video itself. Like I say, this is going to be a whistle stop brief tour of the Link Network. So, the Link Network. As I mentioned before, it's an introduction. You'll see on the current slide that there is the web link to the Link Network main page and website, which is very kindly hosted by a head. And this is historic, which I will kind of go into in the next few slides. It was established in 2008 and was led by a head from that point forward. You will notice the logo of Link. Um, for those who are unable to view the caption, it is a broad logo with the word Link and a statement saying learning inclusively, network and know-how. I would add, this is currently being reviewed as part of a refresh for the Link Network. Again, I will cover this a little bit more briefly later on. So what is Link? Link is the European Learning Network in Inclusivity, Disability and Higher Education. It also encompasses further education and was originally established in 2008 and was co-funded at that point by the European Union Lifelong Learning Programme through to around about 2011. Subsequently, from 2011 to date, it is now entirely self-funded by the managing partners across the network. And as such, some of that responsibility sometimes falls to NADP if we're hosting a meeting, for example, but is costs that are shared. All network partners um, as part of the network do have national remits on issues relating to disability, inclusivity and transitional work through secondary level further and higher education, respective to their countries. Many of the organisations also have direct links into government bodies in the same way as NADP does with Department for Education, Student Finance England, the Student Loans Company as examples and wider. Our European partners also have similar contacts and communications in and within their respective countries. The aim of the, the Link Network is to provide a shared forum with the ability for expert and specialist partners to share research, collaborate and foster best practice in the sector and share that across Europe and potentially wider as time goes forward. The partnership currently consists of eight partners. Um, who reside across seven countries. So, for example, we do have one partner that 
um, is represented by two organisations. Our current chair for the Link Network is Dara Ryder. For those of our members who are aware and for newer members who may not be, Dara is a critical friend of NADP and has been really supportive of our organisation over the years and is the CEO for AHEAD in Ireland. And as I mentioned before, um, AHEAD are hosting the web page for the Link Network and Partnership. What's the core strategy? The core strategy is currently being reviewed as um, with a few things uh, for the partnership. However, it is essentially to promote the full inclusion of disabled students in far, further and higher education with the core objective to share knowledge and best practice. Now, this does apply right across the board from professional service delivery through to academic delivery, through to thinking about estates and accessibility from a physical point of view, and also the current and ongoing conversations as an example regarding COVID-19 and the need to deliver um, teaching and learning to students in a variety of ways and methods, taking into account remote delivery of teaching and learning through to physical delivery and timetabling of students being on sites as being primary examples. To underpin the core strategies for LINK, we have three shared values, which I'm sure our membership will also wholly understand and agree with and be in the same frame of mind in terms of our outlook in de delivering uh, our services to disabled students. The first one is inclusion is a right. I think that's a statement. I think we'd all agree with that. I know I do. Difference is valued. Embracing difference is really, really important and something that in higher education, further education, secondary education should be being embraced, should be being worked through inclusively to ensure that all differences are taken into account when curriculum design is being worked through, when engaging with students directly when preparing students for teaching and learning etc and preparing students for student life whether that's in, in secondary further or higher education lastly learning is to be shared it's a right and you know the need for education um, for young people and people in general is something that i know as a membership and as a sector we are all infinitely passionate about. So who is represented in the LINK network? As I mentioned before, we have um, eight partners, representative of seven countries. So obviously, you know me. Uh, my name's Brian. I'm the chair of NADP. And, and when working within the LINK partnership, I represent the United Kingdom, and that is representative of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And th what I will be doing in the forthcoming year is wanting to work much closer with our partners in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland and England to ensure that what we are representing in terms of that link partnership is fluidly what is happening across the various nations that are being represented within the UK. The next partner is AHEAD from Ireland. We have DSIS from Slovenia, ECIO from the Netherlands, NTNU from Norway. We have Stockholm University and Lund University from Sweden. And we also have CEHO from Belgium. Now, all of these organisations have had direct delivery and, and engagement with you as a membership, um, either through our physical conferences in the past, our international conferences in the past, most recently our virtual conferences. Um, uh, conferences, that's a plural, but I think you know what I mean, the conference, over nine or ten weeks and we had contributions from Belgium and Ireland um, as part of that um, and wider. And we'll be continuing that and is I would also add is reciprocal. 
in terms of what NADP does to support our European partners alongside. Do have a look at the links for the individual partners. They're really interesting and will give you a flavour of the types of specialisms that each of those organisations and representative countries bring to the table when we meet as a network. So how do the partners contribute and collaborate? Well, we have face to face and virtual meetings at least once a year, but more um, likely to be twice a year. Obviously, most recently, that's been more of a challenge and therefore using technologies at our disposal, including Microsoft Teams and Zoom, for example, have enabled the partnership to continue de continuing development of the network. And as I mentioned before, reviewing and refreshing what the link network um, is and what it's about and what it will be doing in the longer term. It enables time, focus time, to share the latest best practice um, from respective countries, inclusive of changes and respective national policies and trends in, and the challenges um, associated with those. As we know, in the UK, there have been many changes um, in national policy. There have been the recent tenders through SLC and some of the announcements as and when they've come out, we know that we've engaged with. Um, the recently formed Disabled Students um, Commission, um, headed by Jeff Layer, is a really good um, example of some of the change and development in the UK. And these are elements that we share with our European colleagues. The network is to inspire creativity and innovation. And actually, that's that's one of the, the benchmarks of the network that I love, which is about the ability to collaborate on shared projects and developments. So regardless of countries, this is more about ability and specialist knowledge and expertise and tapping in to resources that are in and across the representative network um, countries and organisations. Lastly, meeting at various events and conferences. I'm sure many of our members have met directly um, many of, if not all, of our LINK partners and colleagues over the years. They have been incredibly supportive of our organisation and our conferences, both our national conferences and our international conferences in the past, and as mentioned before, also the virtual conference um, we have piloted in 2020. This will continue. It's also reciprocal. So a really good example, uh, Joe Hastwell, who's on the board of directors and also works for the University of Cambridge, um, very recently travelled across to Belgium as part of a conference being hosted by CEHO and delivered um, a workshop session uh, on behalf of NADP and the UK as part of that visit. So it is something that is regularly reciprocated from a UK perspective and vice versa. And I think there is huge value in continuing those relationships and um, sharing the philosophy around that relationship. So what's new for LINK? And as I mentioned before, a few times now, um, lots of refresh and update. So most importantly, the website um, is and will be undergoing a little bit of a refresh. Um, the network brand, its aims and strategies will be um, also a focus for the network in the coming months. We have themed meetings planned um, along with associated projects. Um, our forthcoming meeting at the beginning of September is titled Digital Accessibility and Education. And given the elements around COVID-19 and the very swift developments right across the sector of the use of digital tools um, to assist engagement with students in the wider sense has enabled really a, a, a process of working through how those tools can be used much more effectively over a period of time that isn't simply as a result of responding to a wider pandemic crisis. 
We also think about the transition to working remotely and again, using the technologies as professionals. So linking with ourselves and each other as professionals across Europe on a regular basis to ensure that there's excellent um, rapport, good understanding of the challenges um, sharing of some of the um, sometimes workload, um, sometimes using each other as a bit of a sounding board if we're working on something or most importantly, trying to problem solve if we have a shared challenge. Also thinking about the subsequent impacts across the sector from decisions that could stem from local government changes, etc., and how that might benchmark across um, other partners. We will continue to have delivery from Link Partners at our conferences and wider activities. Um, and we would always welcome that. I think it, it, it enriches what we do in the UK and also gives us the opportunity to reflect on what we could do better and, and vice versa. We also have the longer term potential to host European wide activities that relate to benchmarking, developing existing practice in the UK. There's some fabulous work I know that we do in the UK and there's some fabulous work with in and across our partnerships and being able to provide an environment that all our partners and respective members um, etc can engage with in one sense is something that we are currently beginning to look at. And there you have it. Hopefully that's been quite useful in terms of providing an overview of the Lint network. As I said, I think the forthcoming year or more will be very exciting in terms of the partnership and the work with NADP and the impact actually on being able to share the benefits of the relationships of the network with the wider membership, because I think there are many positives that we can begin to move forward that will be very useful for you in your respective roles in and across the sector. In the meantime, I would also like to thank all for engaging with the virtual conference over the last nine or ten weeks. Um, it's been very valuable to be part of and some of the engagement from members and feedback from members has been really, really supportive. Or notwithstanding the fact that all have been working within what it has been and I'm sure will continue to be quite a challenging environment at present and moving forward. So I will sign off there. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you soon. In the meantime, take care, look after yourselves and particularly as we head into the forthcoming academic year, look after yourselves and each other as always. Bye bye.